Hello, happy day. Um, I have some astro weather for you for the whole year of 2023. I'm so excited. Um, so let's start. We're just going to touch on a couple transits, which are how the planets are moving in relationship to each other. Um, so I can do, this will be very generalized. It will be um, just kind of the general theme, but if you want something specific, then I look at your chart and show you like exactly where areas of your life that these things um, will be touching on, let me know because I'm doing um, personalized reports for the year as well. Um, that will be just much more specific. We'll get into the areas of your life that this energy is touching on. So, um, for example, if Saturn is moving through your first house, that is a lot different than if Saturn is moving through your fifth house. And everyone, it's different for everybody. So um, that's why you get an astrologer to look at your chart. <laughs> um, but let's get going with the basics, the general overview of the whole year ahead. Um, first, I'd like to talk about the Mars retrograde. Um, Mars is typically in a planet for, uh, or in a sign, excuse me, for a little over a month at a time. Um, but because of how everything, um, because of its retrograde this year, it's been in Gemini for seven months, which is just very notable. Um, just because that's a huge, a huge increase of time in one sign. Um, so this began in August of 2022 when Mars went into Gemini. Then it went retrograde on October 30th. So that's when from our position here on Earth, it appeared to be moving backwards. It didn't actually do that, um, but that's just what it looks like from here. So October 30th is um, the day that Mars went retrograde. So that this, when it's in the retrograde phase is the highest intensity fit part of, of that transit. So from October 30th to January 12th is when that, that retrograde energy is going to be very strong. So we're getting to the end part of that. So if you just look back over the last, since August, and think about how, um, how your life has been, how the general feel, like what's your relationship been to anger and tension and passion and some of those more warrior vibes. Mars is the warrior of the sky. It's the warring planet that, that fights and asserts itself. And um, it's kind of how you do like raw intimacy with your partner. It's kind of how you stand up for yourself and assert yourself. So a lot of the themes that go along with Mars um, are themes that pertain to that. So that is aggression, it's um, assertion, it's how you, how you fight and how you, how you get what you want, how you're motivated. Um, so just reflect a little bit. How did you how did you do those things since August? Were they deterred from the norm for you? Was the the passion volume turned slightly up, or was it turned slightly down? Um, so that is we can look back now that we're we're this is the sixth or the the fifth that I'm recording this video today. So we have a couple more days until. Mars stations direct. So right now is the really good point to look back and reflect and say, oh yeah, I can see this theme of um, where tension arose or discord or conflict. And um, that's why you want to have an astrologer look at your chart because I can see where in your life um, that was activated for you. Um, so the intensity window is coming to an end on January 12th. And then Mars will leave Gemini altogether on March 25th. So that is that marks the very end of the transit. But like I said, we're almost all the way through it. We're to a point where we can look back and recognize patterns and themes. Um, so use that information as your weapon. Use it to help you go forward and continue to work with this Mars energy. Um, with Mars being in Gemini, that's where the retrograde happened. That's where it still is. Um, we tend to use our communication as our weapon of choice, our words, our writing. Um, Gemini rules communication. So um, that is, is likely where we see the discord or where we see the conflict come up in our lives. Um, 
Okay, I hope that wasn't too much astrology lingo. Um, I'm going to keep on going. Um, also in March, Saturn will shift into Pisces. Saturn is in one sign for about three years. So this is going to mark the beginning of a three-year window of time that we, um, we will see themes relating to Saturn being in Pisces. When Saturn is in Pisces, um, we can experience feelings of restriction or limitation um, or seriousness around Pisces themes, which a lot of times is spirituality. A lot of times it is like the things that are kind of beneath the surface a little bit. Um, and in, in traditional astrology, Pisces rules um, enemies and like people that you don't get along with. So um, it depends on where it is in your chart. Like I said, it depends on what house Saturn is specifically moving through, where we can really see um, some clarity around where this may show up in your life. Um, but Saturn in Pisces for us all, just kind of generally and collectively, is going to ask us to examine our mental health and um, our state of emotions that may be we feel more inclined to dodge in some way, shape, or form. Pisces is very, um, if you have a lot of Pisces in your chart, you can be a little bit evasive. And um, that is just a way to deal with strong emotions and things that are hidden and things that you don't want other people to see. Um, so I feel like I always assume that being evasive means using like drugs and alcohol. Um, just drinking or whatever to kind of get away from what you're feeling, but there are so many so many ways uh, Pisces can be a bit of a psychological escape artist and um, They can use anything to dodge what what they're going through even things that are not inherently like bad and I don't like to label things as good or bad but things that we view as really positive and healthy can somehow become a bit of a crutch that we lean on and re rely on to um, feel good on the inside. And I just want to remind you that anytime you're rearranging the outside world in order to feel better on the inside, it's not a real true um, feel better. Because if that thing changes that you reorganized out here, the turmoil comes back or the that like panic or whatever it is comes back. So we really have to focus on getting okay with ourselves and not using positivity or our our faith in something else or anything as a crutch to feel better we have to learn to um to not evade what is going on inside of us to not um, try to dodge it by any means <laughs> um so and that will be going on for three years and it's not going to be like every single day is just this wretched horrible hard that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that gradually over time we will kind of like collect these little themes as we go through our days and we go through our circumstances and situations um, so for the next three years mental health is going to be really important to focus on um, learning to sit with your feelings and not not go outside of yourself not run sideways or put your head in the sand like to just really get okay um, and and truly okay not like fabricated okay like I said about arranging everything on the outside we just need to we just need to get into ourselves and um, and learn to deal with what's going on inside um, also in March Pluto will move into Aquarius just briefly um, that's March through June um, so March is kind of a big month we have Mars leaving Gemini, March 25th. We have Saturn moving into Pisces, March 7th. We have Pluto dipping into Aquarius, March 23rd. Um, so March is a big month. Um, Pluto stays in signs for a long time. That This is kind of a preview of a 20-year transit. That sounds so daunting to me. Um, but I have been listening to a lot of different astrologers talk about Pluto. And um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting was that Pluto, where Pluto is in the sky, kind of reveals the collective fear that's going on at the time. So when Pluto was in Sagittarius, 
that's kind of when school shootings started becoming a theme. Sagittarius is the archer. That is the, that's like the precursor to the, the firearm. That's shooting or harming from a distance. That was a big, a big deal back when that was happening. Um, moving from like killing something face to face with a knife or, or whatever to shooting something from far away. So Pluto and Sagittarius school shootings were, were starting to occur and starting to make everyone nervous. That was kind of like the hype. Um, I know that's still going on, but that when that was happening, that was, and that was probably 20 years ago is when that really started becoming more prevalent. When Pluto is in Scorpio, that was more about like the sexual predator and um, Scorpio rules the, the sexual organs. So that was more of like the Jeffrey Dahmers and the John Wayne Gacy's that were, that were hurting their, their victims in a sexual way and then like ingesting them and consuming them and becoming one with them. And that is so disgusting, but that, that was the big thing when Pluto was in Scorpio. Pluto's in Capricorn right now. What What's everyone afraid of? Everyone's afraid of the, the structures, the government, the systems that are in place. They're hurting us. They're not here to help us. This is like all the conspiracy stuff. And it's just, it's wild how loud it is right now. Um, then, so when Pluto moves into Aquarius, Aquarius is like technology. What's been going on? The AI robots have been taking over. <laughs> not really, but... I know that in December, November, that San Francisco legalized um, lethal use of force with robot cops. So they quickly changed their tune and, and made some revisions to that because of the outcry. But that is technology given the thumbs up to kill people. And that I think that that's just going to be the theme for the next 20 years is we're going to kind of shift away from fear of government and structures and into like fear of robots and technology, but we'll see. Um, so that will be a preview for the next 20 years. Again, that's March 23rd through June 11th. So just stay tuned to get your popcorn and get ready to see what weird things people come up with. Um, I know that we used uh, an AI chat bot. So this is artificial intelligence chat that you can ask questions and it will give you answers, which is just so weird. We used it at the juice store um, for a juice recipe. We, we asked it what we should make with pear. It gave us um, apple, pear, ginger, lemon, and it was just, it was amazing. It was so yummy. So that was like a really mild use of the chat bot but you can use it to write papers for school. You can ask, you can give it a prompt and it will turn out a paper for you to turn in, which isn't plagiarism because it wasn't written by a person. So it's just, it's gonna be so interesting to observe as it unfolds over the next 20 years, what's gonna happen. Um, let's see, Venus retrograde is happening in the summertime in June. And um, depending on where that falls in your specific chart, um, we'll just indicate different things. Um, Venus retrograde is typically a beneficial or a bene benefic <laughs> transit um, because Venus is a benefic planet. It's one of, um, it's just a lighter one. It's lovey dovey -er. Um, so this can, a lot of times with retrogrades, old people come back to our lives. So whether that was like old business partnership or old relationship or old friendship, a lot of times we'll come, come back around and um, maybe they'll have something useful for us. Maybe they'll have an opportunity for us, or maybe they'll just remind us why it didn't work in the first place. Um, so generally that's a very good, a very good transit, especially if you were born at nighttime. Um, depending on where it is in your chart, if it's in the second house, that can indicate lucky time for finances. If it's in your fifth house, it can indicate um, like romance or creativity. So um, just ask me if you want to know what house it's moving through. But I think that that is um, June and July that Venus is going retrograde. So that's just like, that adds to the fun summer vibes. That's gonna be, um, that's gonna be nice and light and fun. And then um, this year we have a shift in the eclipses. We have eclipses, like an eclipse period in um, the springtime and in the fall time. 
Um, so that will be we're moving away from the financial axis, which is Scorpio Taurus. The last couple of eclipses have, have all been Scorpio Taurus. And we're going to move to Aries Libra, which is more like Aries is, is independent and it's me and it's like my physical body and it's all, it's a little bit more selfish. Like it's all concerned with the self, the, the personal freedom, the body, um, physicality, what you're, what you're doing with your time. And then Libra is, is much more concerned with the other and, and relationship and partnership. So we're going to be moving this year. We'll kind of bounce back and forth a little bit with the eclipses, but we will be moving, um, to uh, to just different themes so it's going to be more like me and us will be the theme and a lot of times with eclipses they bring um major beginnings and endings so it's kind of just an extreme time a lot of times through the year we'll, you'll probably find yourself all the way on one end of the spectrum and then all the way on the other end of the spectrum so all the way invested into relationship or all the way invested into yourself and it can feel kind of like like you're in the middle of tug of war or you're getting like whiplash being like whipped back and forth but um like spread out over time <laughs> it's not gonna be like like every minute of every day you're like <gasps> oh my god <laughs> how do I do this? Or, oh well, my gosh, this is too much. It's just, I think that like, as we get through the year and we look back, we'll be like, oh yeah, like that was going on. Or I did feel torn between myself and others. So that's what we have coming up for the whole year. Um, we have retrogrades. We have Mercury retrograde right now until January 18th in Capricorn. So this is just thinking about how to implement your New Year's resolution, thinking about what is reasonable and practical and what can you actually, what steps can you actually take in a, a pragmatic manner to achieve your goals versus like, new year, new you, I'm just gonna do it. Like Mercury retrograde is gonna make that a little bit trickier. So I advise you to spend January contemplating how you can implement your resolutions to, to carry them all the way through the year instead of like burning out on January 31st. Um, the next retrograde will be in April, April 21st through May 14th. That's in Taurus, that's another earth sign. That's more, that's another practical, um, another practical group of vibes. <laughs> so um, that is the time that we'll probably, it'll probably be best to contemplate um, your finances, how you are spending, how you are um, doing luxury, how you're doing um, consuming, 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 consuming. How do you, how do you do that? Um, August 23rd through September 15th, we will have the retrograde, Mercury retrograde happening in Virgo. So this asks us to contemplate, reflect how we, how we do our daily routine and how we do our health, like our, our self-care strategies. Um, and it just asks us to think about those things. Are they working? Are you doing anything? First of all, <laughs> do you do anything to care for yourself? Do you do anything in your daily routine? Um, that is really good and really helpful to you. And if not, like what can you get rid of and how can you restructure some things to care for yourself in a more efficient and meaningful way? You don't wanna waste your time um, because time moves insanely fast. <laughs> um, and then the last, last retrograde of the year, last Mercury retrograde of the year will be December 12th through January 1st. So that'll be fun. Um, and that is in Capricorn and Sagittarius. And that just asks us to contemplate, again, some of those Capricorn themes of structure and foundation and systems, what systems in your life are working for you. And then um, the Sagittarius component is like, how can you zoom out and see the bigger picture and revise from there? Um, so yeah, happy 2023. Let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like a custom report, I will write you a custom report for $50. If you wanna do a consultation, um, then I will, um, we can set up a time to chat about it and that will be 150. Um, so yeah, and then if you have any like small generic questions, let me know, put them in the, in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you have a fabulous year.